resign meetings for on April 3rd to order. Um, Bob, would you like to have the first moment here? Yes, yeah, if we could. Um, recently, Howard Zimmerman passed away. He was on a, the Zoning Board of Appeal. And I'd like to just take a minute in his memory to recognize Howard Zimmerman. Come in. Thank you. Uh, Chuck, would you call a roll? Bill Flotts? Yes. Bob Young? Yes. James Carley? Present. Justin Gimble? Here. Dahl Holt? Yes. Paul River? Bill Peterson? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, I hope that you can approve the agenda so that we can just move all over the place. Um, if that's okay with you. If there's any additions to the agenda, uh, I'd like to hear about those now, but I hope I can give me permission to just rearrange things so that um, different parties can do things at different times here. Is that okay? So moved. Second. Okay, thanks. All in favor? Aye. Uh, how about the minutes of uh, the March meeting? Thank you. Second? Justin, thanks. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the TSB report is in front of you, and um, I didn't find anything in there that was substantial, I guess. If the committee has any questions about that report, um, ask them now. Alina, do you have any comments about it? Anybody? Okay. Hearing none, we're going to move on to B. Um, Chuck, pick it up from there. In your handout reports tonight, you got a copy of a, a report that is in regards to a proposed subdivision or resubdivision of property, along with some variances in regards to some lot frontage issues to go with this. Um, this is an existing subdivision, which is in section 25 of Brooks Creek Township, of which you're planning on resubdividing as quickly as you have the small, you have the smaller ones. Because this portion. This is 116 at the top. You have the, you have the larger, the larger subdivision in its entirety here, and these two lots, 14 and 15, are the ones being considered to be resubdivided tonight. And you have those are part of the package handed out to you, so it's part of a larger subdivision that's being considered tonight. So. What they're looking at doing is taking those two lots as part of the plat that you have and part of the packet in front of you um, with flex that they're planning on taking uh, lot 14 and dividing it into two lots, lot 14 and lot 16, and then taking existing lot 15 and resubdividing that into three lots, which will become 15, 17, and 18. And in doing so, um, the frontage requirements for the one new lot to the north and then for the three lots to the south will be less than the required uh, frontage requirements within the zoning regulations, of which will require a variance of which is separate here and with a variance before the zoning board of appeals. Just make sure everybody has a, a total idea as to how they're planning on subdividing, resubdividing the property and doing that. There is an existing house that is currently located on lot 14, and there's a house on the existing lot 15 at the current time. So that's what's being done at this point in time. This is a matter that's gone before the, the Zoning Board of Appeal, or before the Planning Commission, a couple times. It started last fall, and there were some uh, issues in regards to the covenants that went with the property at that point in time. And between then and now, um, all the property owners of the subdivision at large, in its entirety that you saw, have come to an agreement as far as uh, redoing the covenant. So basically, all the property owners, except the property owners association, as opposed to the developers being the controlling factor of the covenants, and they've come to an agreement. Um, some other things, if you see on lot, the, the far north lot, uh, proposed lot. 
16, you can see that the area just to the east is what's being limited as far as being the buildable area in the lot. So we've kind of addressed that as being the buildable area on that particular lot. And everybody signed off on the new covenants and the agreement of proposed subdivision. The current property owners are familiar with what's being subdivided, how they plan to subdivide it, so they're aware of that. Um, the Township Road Commissioner, uh, who has responsibility for the roads through there, has also been contacted and they provided an email or some written correspondence in regards to um, they are okay with it too. Uh, they have no problems with it. There's no new road mileage going in. Um, they're not <laughs> concerned about the extra lots being developed to go along in there with it. As part of that, I did add a, a sheet that was a, a blow up sheet as part of the report that shows you the exact proposals of the lot frontages that's being proposed. They become a bunch of pie shop lots that are going in particular with that. And then you have a couple of area photographs that show you um, the developed property, which would be these two houses here. So you can see the houses that are developed on the property there and some of the other houses in the area. And uh, the last area photo shows you the subdivision as a whole as far as the development of the houses on the property currently. You see the development of, of five houses on the property currently, obviously there's more lots. There's some owners that own, that own multiple lots in there also, so they, they have a lot of control over the multiple lots in regards to that. Um, we did have a planning commission meeting was set to review this last evening. The planning commission did meet. They did not have a quorum, so they did not take any action in regards to this. Uh, they did review it. Uh, they had no questions that, or, that come before you. At the meeting last night, uh, Donnie Sims from the County Health Department did send a letter to the property owners in regards to this with some uh, just pointing out some changes in the septic system issues, the location of a well that would probably on a property different from the existing house, and some of the drainage tiles that goes in with that, and there's some discussion about that. Uh, the property owners are aware of those comments. Uh, Donnie is here to see me if you have any course, direct questions or if you want to summarize that. And both of the Rich Brothers are here, which are the applicants and owners of the property. So all the parties are present this evening for any questions you may have. So. I assume there's enough acreage per lot for? There is enough acreage. The minimum acreage usually you're going to have in the smallest lot is 1.7 acres. And what about Let's get the motion on the floor and then have I'll the discussion. I'll make the motion. Sorry, no Second by Bill. Uh, now, any comments or questions from the committee? Donnie Simmons is here. <laughs> he made the trip if you want to ask a question. Made a trip. <laughs> no questions? No. Okay, is this voice vote? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Okay. Thank you, and thank you to the riches, I believe, are here and so forth. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Is it a done deal now? Can they? It is go before the county board. Oh, okay. So board appeals for the variances. So. <laughs> okay. Two more meetings. We're still rolling. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's go to... Uh, Whispering Oak subdivision, you have your people here. Are you ready to? We're still waiting for one. Okay, all yeah. right. We'll skip over you for a minute. We'll go to the Smith Douglas Intergovernmental Agreement. I assume that Adam is here and going to speak on that. This is item F. Okay, well, good evening. Uh, thank you, uh, members of the uh, Pagan Zone Committee, for your accommodation here on the agenda. What we have is an intergovernmental agreement between uh, the city of Streeter and uh, Livingston County. Uh, I'm essentially speaking this evening on behalf of Streeter for a couple of reasons. One, uh, their city manager is out of the country. Their attorney who drafted the agreement was uh, uh, in a meeting in Decatur and couldn't make it. They're a member of ours and uh, I think is an economic development organization. Uh, we see a, a positive benefit to uh, Livingston County uh, and the region for having a uh, uh, what would be a toxic site that is uh, not producing an income for any uh, tax entity. You'll note uh, if you've read the agreement, it states that taxes have not been paid 
uh, to the county or otherwise on the site since I believe 1982. And so uh, what we have here is an opportunity for the city of Streeter to uh, uh, take the initiative to uh, really seek out uh, grant funds. They're willing to create a TIF district whereby uh, TIF funds can be used uh, for uh, environmental uh, studies, matching funds, uh, cleanups are related to the site. And uh, what they are seeking uh, essentially is Livingston County to enter into this uh, intergovernmental agreement, which provides a few things. One, that the uh, county will provide the statutory notice required to conduct a scavenger sale. Two, uh, Livingston County will waive uh, its interest in the back taxes and uh, fines and penalties therewith. Uh, three, and would uh, cooperate and support any applications they may make to the EPA or uh, other entities for funds in connection with remediation of the site. Uh, that really uh, surrounds the matter, not to oversimplify it, but um, I would open it up for any questions any of the board members may have or uh, Tom or Seth would like to add to my overview of that. I would assume that this would eliminate any liability that the county would have for that site? Well, I, you know, I think that's a, uh, I don't know. Let's let the attorneys uh, address that. I would say I don't know that the county has any liability for the site. The county's never been in the chain of title. Uh, the city of Streeter has contacted, uh, I believe, both the US EPA and the Illinois EPA for letters that would uh, prevent the city of Streeter from uh, taking any environmental liability for the site. Okay? But I don't, I don't know, uh, I, don't, I don't think, to confirm this with council, that we should make the assumption that Livingston County presently has or would ever have any liability for the site. Seth, would you like to speak to this? We don't currently have any liability. <laughs> This has a long history, and we have studiously avoided having taken any any interest in the property. Anything else you'd like to come in about regarding this? <coughs> Seth or Tom? Or? <laughs> <laughs> um. Yes, I'll, 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 Tom's had an opportunity to speak with the attorney from Streeter more than I have on this and was involved in the meeting uh, on this. I'll, I'll just state that I haven't, uh, for lack of a better term, I haven't signed off on the intergovernmental agreement yet. And I'll be honest that I have some uh, reservations about it at this point in time. Uh, only because I think there's more to be researched and determined before moving forward. I, I feel as though there is a push, and I understand they may have a reason for maybe deadlines on Streeter's side of it, but I feel that they're pushing uh, very quickly for us to accomplish something while we haven't had the time to review it as in depth as we would like to. At least that's the, the feeling that I have on it. Um, there's some parts of this, just this evening, uh, I was speaking with Barb Sear on some of the parcels that are involved, and the descriptions of the parcels are different depending on which resource you go to. The, the, the versions that we have for the tracks are different than the versions the title company has, which are different than the versions that the EPA has. So we don't even have a consistency among the legal descriptions or determinations of what these, these tracks and parcels are. So that, that's one issue. Another issue that I see is there's a 10-day out on this that either, and it's granted, it's for either party. Either party can cancel within 10 days. But there's a lot that goes into, and Barb can speak to this, there's a lot that goes into putting on one of these sales. And I don't know that once we begin the process and put it out there, I don't think we can just up and stop it um, just because we don't want to do it anymore. Now, again, we haven't had a chance to review that and research that. But if we start down the road whereby we're hoping that they're going to purchase this at the scavenger sale, 
and all of a sudden they come in <clears throat> 10 days before the sale and say, we want out of this agreement. It gives them that out, and now we're moving forward with the sale. Once we offer it for sale, if nobody else buys it, are we going to be bound to take possession of it? What happens with it at that point in time? Are we required to list it for sale again? Um, as we were sitting here a few minutes ago, I was looking through, there's a section in the statute that talks about if a property, if a parcel isn't sold, that it shall be offered for sale in the subsequent years. Most times in the law, shall means you have to do it. Not always. Most times it does. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot of questions about this that I don't think have been properly resolved, and, and that's my my personal feeling on the <coughs> intergovernmental agreement. I also have maybe the more overarching issue that I have with the intergovernmental agreement at this time is it purports to ask us mm -hmm. to enter into an agreement whereby we would be waiving back taxes, liabilities, etc. for street if they buy it. But it doesn't talk about anybody else. And this is supposed to be a public bid. And as we all know, when we're dealing with public bids, we probably shouldn't be striking deals with one buyer or another before the bidding process even begins. Now, I'm not saying that there's anything technically illegal about that at this point in time. I just haven't had enough time to research it. But it strikes me as something that doesn't sit quite right. And any time that as an attorney, there's something that doesn't sit quite right with me, it causes my concern. So as my client, I'm informing you, Livingston County, you can still go ahead and do this. I'm just not willing at this time to, to sign off on it because it strikes me that we're potentially creating an agreement with one bidder and not with any other bidders. And I can see how that might be perceived, not exactly as bid rigging, but, but certainly as something that is questionable. Okay. Um, I know this is on the agenda for the administrative committee on Thursday night, so I assume we don't have to take any particular action anyway? Or was that the intent? The intent was that the action would be taken here, and it was on the administrative committee to allow for further discussion, should further discussion be needed prior to the board meeting. Um, but it was the, um, the thought that the action would come from the city. What you choose to do with it from there is up to you. Adam, um, sometimes when something sounds almost too good to be truth, they say to follow the money. And the money, some worse treaters got to think of an economic <coughs> interest in them acquiring that property and uh, cleaning it up. Sure, let me, let me respond to that. Uh, there is, I told you there wasn't an economic interest uh, for Streeter in this deal. I, I think that'd be false. Well, this deal on its face directly reports to Livingston County it's their intention to annex the property into the city of Streeter. Today, the city of Streeter gets no tax revenue uh, as a result of this property. And by the way, Livingston County hasn't either since 1982. And the economic <laughs> interest to Streeter is to say, if we take the initiative to annex this to create a TIF district and to file applications for grant money to clean it up, Streeter will benefit from it by someday returning this as a, uh, as a productive property to the tax roll. They will, but so will Livingston County, which it hasn't since 1982. So I guess the question, you know, I really don't care who takes the initiative and says, let's put a plan together to, to return to productivity, a parcel that, that's been fallow, if you will, for 30 years, over 30 years. I'm indifferent. This is just somebody that said, hey, let's, uh, let's step up to the plate and, and put a plan together uh, that will provide economic benefit to the city of Streeter, to Livingston County. Arguably, if the property's, uh, <coughs> property's bought and developed, uh, there will be jobs there, and, and, and that should be to economic benefit to the whole region. You know, I think that this matter has been uh, working through offices here at the county and conversations since February. Uh, I think what, uh, what I would like to see 
is this committee recommend an approval subject to legal review and have the, the political will uh, direct direct uh, the state's attorney and, and others to work to resolve this that protects your legal interest. I, I'm not here advocating that Livingston County should, should put itself in a, in a precarious legal position that, uh, uh, that takes on unnecessary liability. But I think we can work uh, to create a scenario where that's not so that And to the state's attorney's point about cancellation and costs that are incurred, as written, the document says uh, that uh, any filing fees in connection with a scavenger sale um, would be borne by uh, the city of Sioux if, if they cancel. Right. For that one sale. Well, what happens if they have to list it for sale in subsequent years pursuant to statute? Are they going to cover it for every year that they have to list it? Seth, I think that's a fair point. So I think what we should do is um, get the, uh, uh, the city manager around the table with uh, with the state's attorney and Streeter's attorney, and say, how do you want to resolve this? Because you you, you have somebody that's putting their foot forward, saying we want to deal with an albatross. It just seemed to me that this is a win-win for for the county. I guess the, I have not thought of the, of the many things that Seth brought up. Um, but uh, when I looked it over, it looked like. You know, here's something that we have had been in, in discussion, uh, a liability. We considered it a liability, considered it an eyesore uh, for 20 years. Uh, and here's a chance to get it developed and get something profitable out of it. And so uh, I, I think that what I'd like to see would be for this committee to approve it with uh, legal with the, with the legal people getting together and trying to uh, alleviate this, these questions, these problems, these potential uh, liabilities, hazards, expenses, and uh, so did get, you, the thing, get the thing fixed. Pardon? Did you, in your motion, is that a motion? Well, I can, you know, I can make that motion. Okay, okay and you I have just, I guess I didn't know we'd done the discussion, but. Oh, well, no, I, let's, let's get some questions from Barb first. Okay, can we ask her? Barb, do you have any? Yeah, um, like Seth said, we've been trying to research, and there's more to be done. I just came up from reading part of statute involving scavenger sale. I want to make clear that a scavenger scavenger sale does not automatically transfer title to the property. They can be the successful bidder of the scavenger sale, but there is still, they have to jump through all the hoops of petitioning for deed, notifying the last owner, and so forth. It's not going to, they're not going to have a bid and take deed tomorrow. It's going to be months down the road, number one. Number two, going on the um, title company search of parcels, and the tracks that they have itemized in their title search, there's one parcel that we don't have an owner listed, hasn't been attacked since 1975. So that would be an issue that would have to be resolved too. And the EPA lien on the property mentions 12 tracks of the property, of which Jan and I sat and we tried to plot out these parcels. That they don't coincide either with active PIN numbers. So there's a lot of questions involved as far as I'm concerned. You know, I don't, yeah. I, I, I want to agree with Daryl. Yeah, there might be some hoops to jump through, but here's a piece of property that is sat and is an eyesore. And, and how many times have we talked about worried about uh, the ponds on that property being drained, draining out to the creek mm -hmm. and then getting into the river? And here's the possibility of Streeter, what they're going to do with it, I don't know. But if they can make it profitable and if they can get it back on the tax and clean that property up, why should we stand in the way? If we got some hoops to jump through, let's jump through them and get it done. It's, it's nothing but a good thing for Livingston County, however you want to look at it. If it gets cleaned up and it sits there and they don't do anything with it, it's cleaned up. If they make it profitable, great. It's great for the county. Like I said, if, if we get jobs out of it, great. If we get taxes out of it, it might be this much. 
but we get something out of it. What have we got out of it the last 30 years? Nothing but an eyesore. What happens if nothing's done, though, Marty? Mm -hmm. It's just left as it is. Then we have no control over it at all. And Ms. Streeter has control. Yeah. But I mean, well, I don't think we got the liability anyway. We, and we wouldn't, we wouldn't then, we don't now. What control do we have to have? Okay. But the possibility, if there's, a, if there's a possibility, we should take it. Otherwise, it's just going to sit there and get worse. Okay, so if, if, they, if they get it and they get it cleaned up with grant, salt for a million dollars, we don't share in that at all. Well, hallelujah. They, so they, they, they stepped up and did it. Okay. Great. <laughs> Carolyn, I'll take a quick, you had your hand up, I won't take a question from you. My, my question is, what is their plan? They must have a plan or they wouldn't be taking it over. So they must see value in it. And I'm just wondering if they have a plan for it. And what it, what are they doing that we couldn't do? And are we giving up future taxes? Do you want to hand it up? Do you want to, we got someone here that's willing to take responsibility for doing it. I don't it. want to hold do it up. I want to understand what's going on. And I don't they, feel like they, they know what's going on. They, they, they put in a... Uh, a, a a thing that you know, the a railroad intermodal. Yeah, intermodal. An intermodal. So what? It's it's good for the county. And so it'll be annexed. And what will the tax consequences be going forward? It'll be in their test district. So we'll it, what we get out of it will be minute. We won't get anything, and, and they will have we'll it in get, their ticket. Yeah, this month. It's not going to pop a Canadian. Adam, would you speak to Carolyn's question no, about what? Anything. What specifically are they going to do with it? Well, I, I think beyond what the intergovernment agreement reports, uh, that, that's what we have to go on today. One, their intention is to annex it. Two, their intention is to create a TIF district of which those funds will be used uh, for remediation and or remediation related activities, applying for phase one analysis, applying to the EPA uh, for grants, et cetera. And, and that's, that's what um, this reports. So the plan is annexation and create a TIF district uh, for for the uh, purpose of uh, remediation related activities. So we don't actually know what the development plan is. There must be the, a redevelopment the, the, plan. The, the site is located. The, the site is located along uh, the Norfolk and Southern Rail. Okay. So there's a there's a, a rail component that makes it attractive. There was an article in the pantograph, I don't know if it was yesterday or Sunday, talking about the rail line from Indianapolis to Wisconsin. It mentioned the counties involved in Illinois. It did not include Livingston, but it did reference LaSalle. And the intersection of these two railroads, as I understand it, is in LaSalle County, and not too far from this particular site. So by inference, you could say that there's maybe that's coming. I don't know. Well, it, and yeah, I, I think that is, is this the Great Lakes Basin Rail that you're referring to? Yeah. Which is, you know, in its infancy, and by the time that that comes to fruition, I, I think could be a could long be way down the road. But nonetheless, so what? That's right. Mark, um, I just wanted to say, that, um, I, I kind of agree with what Marty said to a point, but any time that our attorney tells us that, and I think this is what he told us, is that maybe we're moving a little too fast here, that maybe we need to take a pause and, and, and take a step back and look at this a little closer. I think that's what I was hearing Seth tell us. My question is, is what is there a rush here that we have to get this done by a certain point of time? And and, and if, we, if, it is, if we delay it for a month or two, is that going to cause, what type of problems is that going to cause? We, we, we have done, um, here's what I would say. Uh, I think it's prudent that the county board uh, takes the advice of its council. And I would never recommend uh, that you don't. But uh, what I would ask for is that we get uh, the county's attorney and the city's attorney and the leadership of the respective government entities in a room sooner rather than later to work through the issues. City of Streeter. Uh, has this docket that the creation of their TIF district 
later in April. And that's why they're asking for um, uh, this to be uh, processed to continue. Okay, and I don't know, and, and to me, uh, there's still plenty of time left on the clock to continue in earnest with discussions with Streeter's attorney, our attorney, leadership from the county, leadership from uh, the city of Streeter, to see if we can figure out a plan within uh, their time frame. If we can't, then, you know, say, hey, we've met around the table two or three times and we weren't able to get this resolved. <coughs> push your meeting back. That's, that's so I'm, I'm hearing you say that there still is time on the clock, but this isn't something that has to be done right now, that there is a little time left. What, what, I, what I said is this. They are meeting later this month in April to address this at their city council to create the TIF district to put this property in. So when I say there's time left on the clock, what I mean is, is this council can approve it subject to uh, or this committee can approve it, subject to council's review, and council of Livingston County and council of the city of Streeter can work together over the next two weeks this month to see if they can resolve their issues. Can I ask Seth and Tom what, what, what you just heard what Adam said? Can I let, let, me, ask, this let me make here? this comment? Because I've talked to the Streeter attorney a couple times. They want to move forward this month so they can get their TIP application on file. And they want to get the TIP application and file, so then they, then they can go ahead and make this brownfield application, et cetera. And they think they need to have this intergovernmental agreement to give legitimacy to their TIP petition as well as their claim for the, the brownfield grant. Even though they said it would take months to get it, with the agreement in hand, that gives them the legitimacy, legitimacy and validity to move forward. Right. Even though we still have issues. Yes. Can I ask Shelley to um, address how, if Streeter takes D to this property, do they, how does that affect taxes? Are they automatically tax exempt? Or do they have to apply for exemption? They have to apply and for exemption, but I've never seen this, a, a, a village be denied. Okay, so then there's no taxes coming into play, period, until that property is sold. Right. To a third party, something. To a third party. And so your position is we would be in an inferior position because today we have taxes that accrue daily. Well, yeah. yeah but they're they're not gonna, well, well not but I, that's what I'm trying right. to draw out in the discussion. Right. Is, is apply, you know, we've got an uncollectible debt here. And, and just we have so, no debt because they're not generating any yeah. taxes, period. And just so you understand, the back taxes are approximately $153,000. Correct. The total amount of taxes, penalty, and interest is about $566,000. Now, collectability. Yeah, we don't know who owns it. Well, who owns it? File bankruptcy. They're no, installed. Nobody owns it. Yeah. Nobody. Okay. I, I can shorten that motion. Okay. I'm going to use, I'm going to listen to see if you're going to say recommend. Okay. I would like to uh, recommend this to the county board that the, we approve the intergovernmental inter 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 agreement. Provided that we have uh, meetings and the, our uh, legal advisors can uh, clear the uh, agreement. Is there a second? I'll second. Is there any further discussion? Chuck, if you call the roll. Bill Flott, no. Bob Young? No. James That's Carley? Yes. Justin Gimble? Yes. Carl Holt? Yes. Or Bill Peterson? No. Motion failed. Tie voted. Tie voted. Motion failed. Okay. And Are we done? All right. Bob. Would I entertain another motion if anybody wants to make it? I was going to say, I got a couple more comments. Okay, please. Um, this um, scavenger sale, this is a very unusual, as, as Barb and I are finding out, it's very unusual. We, Barb was able to find one county in the whole state that has done it in the recent past. So the implications of what happened is, is kind of unknown. Um, and then, with regard to the legal descriptions, it, the street attorney got a title commitment from 
the local title company, Chicago Title, down the street here, and it showed that there were eight parcels. I contacted Barb and said, wait a minute, Barb, you've been saying there are seven parcels. <laughs> Shipped it to her, and she looked at it and found out that uh, one of the parcels on the list wasn't even on the tax rules. Right. And, uh, and she can only, what, verify six? Is that? Yeah, there's six parcels on the tax rules that are the end of the collection taxes on that are tied to Smith Douglas. In the title commitment, one track listed really is part of two separate parcels, and the second track is just a small portion portion of one separate parcel. The title commitment lists eight parcels. I've only got six on the books. Partly because one we don't have an owner listed. It's, for me, it's not the legalese. That, uh, you guys can handle all the legalese. I want to know what Streeter has in mind. I, I think that I don't want them to dupe us. Uh, maybe that's not a nice, nice word to use. But I want to know what they're going to do. Um, and I guess I don't care if they do do this. I know. <laughs> I know that's what you're doing. I don't think it's the same way. If they clean it up and they put it and make it productive and they make $2 million, more power to you. I understand, I understand your thoughts on that. It's a policy call. It looks like it's not a big deal. Right, and to clarify again what, what I said to start with, and I think the town's question. We're not saying that, that in general this concept, this idea is a bad idea. We're not, we're not, that's a policy call for you guys to make, whether you want to do this or not. What I was being asked is if there was going to be a vote to approve this intergovernmental agreement as it currently exists in this form that I was handed, I was letting you know my concerns about it. So don't take it from this, this area of the table here that we're saying this is a bad idea, don't do it. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is this particular document, which we were given, still has some issues which we have not yet been able to resolve. I'm not saying that doesn't mean you can't move forward with it and that we can't try to find time to work, but as Mark, when he's saying there's additional time, it's between now and the board meeting that we have to get this resolved. If we have to make huge substantive changes, then the question arises, does it need to come back through this committee or does it go straight to the board? Because if we have to make some big major changes with this based on some research that we do, and maybe we won't have to, but maybe we will. And I don't know if we have enough time to do that between now and the board meeting. Um, maybe we will, maybe we won't. But then again, you're also asking uh, me and, and potentially Tom to drop what we're doing, focus solely on this to get this knocked out before the next meeting. And the benefit to us is, right. So it's very easy for Streeter to say, hey, get this done because we want to get it done because we need to get something accomplished out of it. That's all fine and good, but we've got other business that we have to attend to here as well. So we're willing to do this, we're willing to work on it. We want to get these questions answered because you know, if the board says we don't want to be involved with this parcel anymore, we want it gone, we want Streeter to have it, that's fine. We'll work to make that happen. But we're trying not to get put on some timeline that that, that sets us up for, for missing something. Because the last thing we want to do as your legal counsel is overlook something and have it blow up. Well, I'm not asking for legal counsel to make hastily decisions. I'm just asking to be responsive. And this has been a discussion in progress for a while, not not just this week, last week, the week before. So if you have raised, you raised the point on something. Now, hold on, I'm going to take exception to that because there's an implication there that I don't think is fair. Okay. So do you want to clarify that statement? Sure. <laughs> the, the, I would say that this this that there have been discussions on this. Their front. attorney contacted me when. I don't know, Seth. Okay. That, so well, don't make the no. implication that counsel hasn't been responding. Because that's the implication. If there's been discussions, if there's been discussions among members and there's been discussions, that's fine. But don't make the implication that council hasn't been responsive. I don't think that's what you're saying. That's exactly what he said. We can play back the tape. <laughs> he said, "I'm asking council to start. I don't know if he said start being responsive, but to be responsive." And the implication was that we weren't responsive. We have been responsive. We'll continue to be responsive. But it's also not drop everything and do this for Streeter. That's not my job description. You asked me when they con contacted you, Seth. I don't know when they contacted you, but what I do know is they've been in contact with Tom Blakeman on the, on the matter, and I know that they've been in contact 
with other people at the county for a period of time. You, so I know that you have a relationship you with you Tom's you office, and I can't speak to when they've contacted you. It may truly be. Today could be the first day that you've heard about it. All I'm asking is, as we go forward, to uh, <coughs> there's direction from the committee to investigate this with a council. Where do we want to rank this uh, in <coughs> priority? Because I, I concur that the state's attorney and, and Tom Blakeman's office have a lot on their desk. And so I guess the question is, is we want to try to work to Speeder's timeline. If it can be accommodated, should we set up a meeting for next week or, or not? If you can, I'll call Streeter and just say, we're too busy down here to address this. No, we'll we'll, no, we'll, we'll deal awesome. with it in May. Yeah. May or June. Nobody says we're so too they, busy to do no. anything. Go ahead. Mr. Chairman, I was just wondering, um, when was the first time this was on this committee's agenda? This intergovernmental agreement. Today. No, we talked about the last meeting. This is the first I've heard of it. There was no agreement. No, but we talked about the possibility of, of what them doing something over there and what they were going to do with it because I certainly was aware of this well before today. Go ahead. Yeah, we did put this on the agenda for last month so we were aware that a draft copy of the agreement was distributed at that time. Of course it's changed. It's changed, it's changed. considerably. Yeah. Yeah. In, in response to our request, I think Streeter's <laughs> demonstrated a responsiveness of continually changing the agreement to address the points that have been raised. It's been changed so four times. My motion was not here. No, 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 answers by their deadline was to try to work through it and do what's best for our county and for them. Go ahead. Last I, I will commit to submitting a FOIA regarding Smith Douglas and any plans therefore to the EPA at the state and federal level, LaSalle County and the City of Streeter tomorrow. I don't know if I'll get anything back before the county board meeting but I'll put that, at, uh, that will be in process tomorrow to see if we can glean anything as to what it is that they are planning for this site. And whether, I think it's relevant because, yes, everybody wants to see it cleaned up. No, no argument question. there. But we also need to know how it's going to affect our other businesses and whether we're losing an opportunity that may be out there that maybe we're for some reason not aware of, an uh, intermodal hub. That's a lot of tax collection. And I'm, I'm guessing that if Streeter thinks it's worth pursuing, that we might want to just take a look at it, too. Um, so that's just my comment. Uh, but I will, per I will pursue getting as much information as I can through that process. Is it, uh, let me ask Council and Lena, is it um, within our powers here to have a motion that we forward this to the admin committee without recommendation? and? They can have sure. full control of it. You want to give up that control? Well, I think it's a great <laughs> idea. Is that your motion, Bob? Yeah. Yeah. He has an idea. He's been communicating with me via email. And I think if we told him we needed to set up a, a Skype meeting, I still like the trainer. He would be available. Yeah. 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 Is anybody from the trainer like the mayor or yeah, city really? manager or somebody? This they be come to one of our meetings. Have you faced the fall? I did mention that to the attorney about coming over and making a pitch. Yeah. And they did. Well, they. Uh, city manager is in India. <coughs> okay. The attorney couldn't make it tonight. Probably getting a company to come in here and <laughs> take over that property <laughs> too. <laughs> they get everything done. <laughs> but we, I, don't think, I think the attorney is also not here on Thursday night either. So. But that was my suggestion. That that I mean, it looks like we ought to talk. I, 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 tr I, I, try to, I told the attorney that that's what you're used to is communication, face to face, and with. with 
rather than sending back and forth a flurry of emails, which I've been engaged in for the last several days, that would be better if there was a face. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. I, I think so too. <coughs> I, I will ask that uh, Jimmy Lansford come, the mayor of Streeter, come to the end of the meeting on Thursday night. And bring the plan for the, have them bring the plan for the property after they get it cleaned up. Sure, and I, I, don't, I don't want you to be disappointed. I don't know that there is a grand development plan for it, right? But I'll have them bring up whatever they have available. And I, you know, I, I you can't get a grand we, plan. We've asked, Barb and I have asked the attorney about what's going on, and the attorney didn't, didn't didn't seem to know if there was anything, and I talked to her further on um, Saturday morning or Friday night. So so and, and I, I mentioned the rail and she didn't so so know anything so about it. In fact, she asked me to send a copy of a story that appeared in the Street of Times Press about six <laughs> weeks ago that I'd gotten from Chuck, so I shipped that to her. So. Well, Tom, here. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to even have to ask this, but I don't know how it worked. When one of the wind farms came up here. We needed to get Streeter to extend their enterprise zone, did we not? Yeah, that was so, the spider web. The spider web right. enterprise zone. And the two foot strip that connected all the wind farm and, sites. Together. And for us to do that, wasn't it required the Streeter got a million dollars for that? Is that? <laughs> So, I think, I think that's true. I know it is. <laughs> <laughs> don't ask a question you don't know. Yeah. Don't ask a question you don't know the answer. But it cost us a million dollars. Well, it wasn't to, our money. It wasn't our money. But maybe we would have got that money. It was money that was spent. And no, it goes the other way. And we give up something. Yeah, heaven forbid we do the right thing because of money. Pardon? I said, heaven forbid we do the right thing because of money. The right thing is to get this thing cleaned up, whether they, they do it and make a bundle off of it or they don't. That's the right thing to do is get that cleaned up. And even if you don't allow for money, even if there's another site that they possibly could get a little more to put in, it's still in the county. So what's the matter financially? What site they use? Here we got a chance to let them clean it up, let them take ownership of it, let them take responsibility for it, and the county still makes up. It's a two for. Pardon? A two for. Yeah. It's a site. Yeah. Get two for the site to get the site cleaned up. I don't know. If everybody wants to change, I'll change my vote. Do you have a motion for you on the by Peter Sands and have this committee center down to the administrative committee for the administration? Let's repeat the motion. Motion from Young Center by Peter Sands that this committee here send this matter on to the administration administrative committee for that committee to act upon this request. Any recommendation on this is that an appropriate motion here for this? I'm sorry, there were too many people coming. I, I didn't hear it. Motion by Peterson. From the motion by Young, said by Peterson, that this committee send this issue on to the administration committee for that committee to take action as far as making recommendations to it. Call the roll. They won't know anything about the site. They don't know anything about the site. I don't know before I make a decision. <laughs> Bill Flox. Yes. Bob Young. Yes. James Curley. No. <laughs> Justin Gimble. Yes. Carl Holt. I vote yes just to get it off dead center here because we uh, three and three votes in the kitchen's nothing. Bill Peterson. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay, that motion passed. Okay. Anything additional on that? All right, thank you. Thank you, folks. Now, <laughs> how about Whispering Oaks? <laughs> you're, you're ready now. Yeah. <laughs> Go right ahead. Whispering right. Oaks subdivision outside of town here, and they asked to make a 10 or 15 minute presentation. <laughs> 
I'm going to stand back here, not because I'm camera shy, but I can okay. address her. <laughs> uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Mark Heil, and I'm here on behalf of the Whispering Oak subdivision out by the Enbridge facility out on Route 23. I'm here to remind you and discuss our concerns of safety and health issues since we may be forced to live next to this facility as it grows within a, mi a quarter mile of our homes. Enbridge has already told others that they are not interested in buying us out because they don't want to set precedents down the line. In fact, um, one family asked about en uh, to an Enbridge employee about us and he said those people aren't getting shit from Enbridge. Let me remind you that this is the North American hub for Enbridge. There is no precedence. There is no down the line. This is it. The North American hub where all the bitumen crude oil from Alaska and Canada comes down through Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois, to our backyards, our backyards, not yours. There is no other place in the United States that this is happening. The seven families that live out there are the only ones affected by it. Others have either been bought out or compensated by Enbridge to run the pipelines under their fields. We have to listen to the hum of the pumping stations at night. We have to see the lights at night in what was a peaceful black night sky. And we are the only ones that have to smell the odors that are emitted from this facility. When driving on Route 23 past the facility, I have smelled the noxious gases many times in my car. A few of us have smelled the odors at our homes in the past, and when the wind is right at that facility, it was a mile at that time. It's going to grow to within a quarter mile of our homes now. When the tanks are built that close to our homes, this is going to get much worse. This leads us to a series of issues and concerns on our health by breathing in these poisonous gases. By forcing us to live near the facility, you are putting us in harm's way now and in the future that will eventually lead to long-term health issues for us and ultimately death by breathing in these toxic gases, no matter how big or small they are in concentration. Small concentrations of these gases, which are a combination of large quantities of chemicals like toluene, hydrogen sulfide, and benzene, which is a known human carcinogen. Benzene is the most toxic of the gases that could release toxins in the air and the effects start on the central nervous system of the human body It can eventually lead to impairment of the ability for someone to escape which would leave them unconscious and after that the life-threatening health effects which could include death. Vitamin oil is so much more acidic and abrasive over conventional oil that is way more likely to corrode and weaken pipelines and this puts us at risk even more. The bitumen oil is also heated to make it thinner and increase its speed through the pipeline. With increased flow rate, applied heat, and added pressure in the lines, this risk of rupture greatly increases, and we are the ones who are closest to it. 365 days a year, not five minutes like when you go to the gas station. All day, all night, every day. We are the ones who are nearest to this facility, and we will be punished with our lives in the end. I've lived in this county for 10 years now and paid over $50,000 in property taxes. And this is what I get, a slow forced death in a property that I cannot enjoy, a property that I cannot sell due to the increased risk that others are not willing to live by, and sleepless nights caused by noises, smells, and the fear at any time that an explosion can kill me in my own home, the place that I'm supposed to feel safest. It may sound odd or crazy to you, but when the spring storms approach, I actually pray for a tornado. I ask God for a tornado that will rob me of my worldly possessions and my home, one that destroys everything I own, except for myself and my pets who I would hopefully have with me in the basement at that time. This may be my only hope to get out of a bad situation that I have been put in and move to an area where I might have a little more control over my health. The diluted bitumen crew that flows through these pipes near us will soon be flowing into the above ground tanks in the fields right behind our homes. It does cause adverse health effects. This includes cardiovascular, dermal, gastrointestinal, neurological, ocular, <coughs> renal, and respiratory impacts on the human body. This is not speculation, this is fact. In 2013, near Mayflower, Arkansas, 
the spill of 210,000 gallons of oil showed significant increased levels of benzene in the ambient air and residents living near the spill reported increased headaches, nausea, and respiratory issues. Hundreds of people in town went to the local hospitals with respiratory disorders, nausea, fatigue, nosebleeds, bowel issues, and throbbing headaches. Jason Thompson is one man who was living in Mayflower at that time. His home was two miles from that facility, two miles. He had headaches so intense that they would wake him up in the middle of the night and make him nauseous. He had nosebleeds and hemorrhoids even though he was 36 years old. There was a rash that developed on his neck and had gotten worse in the eight months after the spill and some days he felt so weak he couldn't even get out of bed. In eight months, he lost 35 pounds, and when he went to see a doctor the following April, the doctor told him that he had a mysterious spot on his lung, and it could be cancerous, but he wasn't able to afford the money to go back for additional visits. Will we be forced to pay out of our own pockets for health issues that were brought on to us from Enbridge in the county? The Enbridge-Kalamazoo River spill in July of 2010 has created many of the same health issues for residents in that area. The short-term effects on people in that area were headaches, nausea, respiratory issues, and eye irritations. Others also experienced high anxiety, anxiety levels no matter what their exposures were, which could have led to heart failure in older patients. These effects stopped when the people were no longer breathing air contaminated with oil-related chemicals. This is in the public health assessment summary, which was prepared by the Michigan Department of Community Health in September 2015 five years after the spill. 550 individuals from four different communities had adverse health effects, which included headaches, nausea, vomiting, coughs, breathing difficulties, skin issues, eye issues, anxiety, dizziness, fatigue, and chest pains. And it was also noted that both children and elderly people were even more sensitive to these effects. In conclusion, I want to ask about the decisions made on the Pleasant Ridge Wind Energy Project, not making light of it with all due respect to the people that are fighting that fight. The county has sided with over 300 families fighting that fight to not allow the turbines built due to property value concerns and the safety and well-being of its citizens. Although we are only seven families, do we not count as part of the citizens of Livingston County? We do not have a $300 an attorney nor the numbers involved but we are still in the same type of situation. In my personal opinion, we're in a worse situation being closer to the tank farm with a facility that can kill us over time. With poisoning of the air that we breathe, the land that we live, and the well in our water underground, not only from the facility next to us, but the pipelines that have been laid over the aquifers that feed our homes. This is a $2.1 billion project in our backyards and is built, being built by government-funded company worth trillions. To buy us out and protect your citizens would literally cost around one-half of 1% 1 of the total entire project value. This is simply a blip on the radar for the Enbridge monetarily, but a catastrophic nightmare for the county should we be harmed with this project as it would gain attention from the national news media. Someone else's? Yes. <clears throat> My name is Alan Barling. I live out. I'm the oldest one out there. I've been out there for many years. And I'm one of the lucky ones that has got the whole county agreement. Uh, but I'm not so sure to be one of the lucky ones. I'm going to give you guys a couple copies of this to look at. Because if you look at it, it's going to say in there that this has to be. Uh, Certificate you have to have demonstrate the appraiser the value is correctly attributed to the operation of the landfill. Well, with this coming on, let's get the rat out of it. Because they're going to say that it's the oil. The oil is going to say it's the landfill. So there's only two of us out there that have got these agreements myself and my and Charlotte Ford, and they couldn't be here tonight. But this this is basically going to be worthless for us. And that's why it's got, something's got to be done to the whole community out there. Um, I thought at one point in time that I'd be able to sell my house, but the more and more I get to thinking about it, 
I'm not even sure that's going to be possible. Um, there's a house for sale right now that's down by um, Hummiston that's been on the market for over a year. Um, beautiful two-story brick home. I don't know if you've been out towards Hummiston. That house has been on the market for over a year. Um, I am seriously thinking about trying to put ours up for sale. Monty and Charlotte are too. Um, but there again, we've got to disclose this. Whether we do it through a realtor or ourselves, we you know we have to legally disclose <coughs> this. Um, I have done an appraisal um, just recently in September, and this is not even having the landfills now, or having the excuse me the tank farm. I did an appraisal back in 2003. My home was appraised at 350 thousand, but it took in consideration the landfill, which made it. 15 to 25 percent less than market value. I took an appraisal just in September. My home now is worth $323,000, and it does not consider anything. It's just as if the house was in Pontiac, Bloomington, wherever. So all told, my house is probably worth 50 to 75 thousand dollars less in 13 years. Now. I was always taught that, you know, a home is a good investment and you could always count on usually your home staying stable or at least making something off of it. It doesn't usually go the other way. We keep this up, the whole county is going to be nothing but landfills, tank farms, and wind farms. We, we need to protect this county and the people in this county. And please take this into consideration, and I appreciate your guys' time. Thank you. Thank you. Additional people. Not that I'm aware of. Okay. I'm going to ask you a question. What are you asking us to do? Anything at this particular time? Or is this down the road, or what? No, down, down the road. I guess this is something else that... You guys want to see how close we are? No, I don't. I, I just want you to answer my okay. question. Well, this is, I mean, how close we are. I guess what we're asking for now is a buyout. From who? From if Enbridge goes through with this. Right now, the this? right now the tank farm is supposedly tabled indefinitely. But uh, goes we know through. that's not true. Um, they need special use permit on that ag land for the tank farm, as far as I'm aware. Um, so, you know, our protection would be asking for the county to uh, <coughs> somehow get involved in it in a way that, that Enbridge and, offers us that buyout. In a minimum, either the buyout, a minimum would be a property value guarantee a lot better than the one that's, that I gave you a copy of. <coughs> when we're talking about a half of 1%, of the whole entire project value. They're, they're even talking about rail. Yeah, now they're... <laughs> Chuck, is anything... We don't have anything pending, correct? No, I know. No, I mean, they, they were aware of what we had pending. And right. They, they, I think the economy has stalled things at this point in time. And they would have to get a special use? That's the way we, we started going down that road. And right. They bought the land, they bought the ag land, but they don't have the special use permit to put those tanks on that land at this time. They're running another power feed in from the south. They are, yeah. Yeah, they're putting up power lines like crazy all around yeah, us. Right behind our house, like today. <laughs> Go ahead. Aren't they gonna be on the agenda or present for the April meeting? We, I was told in a meeting at Adam Johnson's office that they were not going to ask for anything at this time, but that they were going to be present and uh, asking us if there's, uh, I don't know, reaching out to us as good neighbors. <laughs> not that I'm aware of. Yeah. It is I'm possible gonna, they will be coming, but I don't know when. I agree. I mean, I, was, I, I, had a meet, I had a meeting with them as well, and they told me they'd be at the April meeting, is what they told me. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, thank you for coming and speaking with us. And uh, we'll, when we find out something, I guess we'll at least know what you guys have said. Appreciate it. I have one quick question for you guys. When you say half of 1%, mm -hmm. 
Are you including in that the one hundred percent of your property values? We the way I or figured it out this was, this was actually two years ago now, so it could be less. Um, was that I had just taken what I found on the tax assessor's website for for what our properties would be worth, and then figured out uh, roughly about ten percent above that. Uh, you so know, that's a hundred percent of the value, not just the impact. So in other words, if they bought those properties, they could actually resell them or they could, lease them or they could use them for or, their own. They could use, use them for their own engineers for housing. They wouldn't have to go and spend all the transportation fees and costs to get down to Bloomington. All okay, the time. I just wanted to know where you got that. All right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's thanks. <laughs> we're we're going to move on now. Um, thank you for coming and take that. We heard you out. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go to C. Uh, Livingston County Zone ZT 1 16, the moratorium extension. What do you got on that for us, Chuck? Okay, I mean, you as county board uh, passed us to move forward to the hearing uh, process before the planning commission and before the zoning board of appeals, which it did uh, last month. And both of, both of those bodies have recommended that it be approved. The zoning board of appeals meeting, uh, John Slater was present and he spoke in favor of it in their Indian Grove Township. I guess as their planning commission and as the township as a whole have both met and both of them are okay with it proceeding as being proposed for a 230 day extension of the moratorium so it lasts till November 30th of this year. So what's the next step? Go for the county board needs to approve it at their meeting in April 14th. Okay. Any questions about that? Any problems there? Okay. Can we make a motion? Okay, all right. Motion is okay. Send it to the county board in April meeting. Second to that. Okay, second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. We are down to uh, updated wind energy issues. Um, Review considerations for new wind energy regulations text language. Um, I think since uh, our last meeting, we've received, as you probably, most of you know, a lot of you have been part of, uh, additional information that uh, we seriously want to look at. I don't think we've all had time to digest that yet. Um, we'll let some of those people speak to that if they wish for short amount of time. I asked John Slagle if he'd like to report on the uh, meeting of the Plan Commission the, of their township. Go right ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, so we met on uh, Wednesday, March 23rd, the Indian Grove Planning Commission. Um, the uh, reason we met is to approve the moratorium, or to yeah, go over the moratorium, make sure we're okay with it. Um, but we also decided we wanted to start going over all the changes the, the ordinance has been changing um, and see if we were okay with them, if we agreed or disagreed with the, the okay. overall thing. Um, so, and we wanted to present it to the township trustees, but we didn't want to make them go through all the points. So we decided what we'd do is we'd go through all the change, proposed changes, and for each one we uh, rated it from our point of view of health, safety, welfare, uh, the people living there. Uh, whether it was a negative, a neutral, or a positive. If something was like a neutral or positive, depending on how it went, we counted it in both categories. So we went through all the items and we came up with uh, four negatives. Um, we came up with eight neutrals and 13 positives, which was actually a little surprising. I, I thought it was gonna be slightly more negative than that. Um, Nelson Zier, who's pretty um, pessimistic about things, even said um, this is encouraging to him. So, uh, and of the four n negatives that we came up with, um, a lot of these could easily become positives. Like um, one of the negatives was the 30 hours. Of if that was set to be zero, it would be a positive. Um, or at least change to be saying uh, no greater than 30 hours. Change the um, wording. Yes, because if you say allowed up to 30, that's approving 30 hours. Or you're just saying we don't want over 30. Okay. Um, the other item we found was the special conditions. Um, we think they're a negative um, in some ways, but we think they're a positive if they're actually included in the ordinance because 
it eliminates the step of where the county board is negotiating in private with the wind company, which is sort of a transparency issue to the people. Um, so we thought if those were included and made a little more firm and included in the ordinance, that would be positive. Um, we, the, another negative was the 150 foot um, noise limit around the house. We thought that was losing people's property lines. We <coughs> preferred that to, to stick with property line. And then the other negatives we wanted to, the property value guarantee was stricken and we um, would have liked that added. Um, and a couple of the positives we liked were including the ending of setbacks in there and the referendum coming up. Yeah, so. Speaking about the referendum again. So, yeah, that I mean that was assuming that the referendum and the any grove setbacks are in there. Okay, so you count those. You do positives. you do uh, favor the referendum. Yes, that's interesting. Okay. All right, does that do it? That's it. All right, thank you. Um, <coughs> Dean or Helen, do you want to take just a couple of minutes to speak or? <laughs> I don't know what we could say about what we have here in two minutes. But, okay. Um, basically, I think everyone, we had, we didn't talk to Kathy or um, Vicki about it yet, but the other, all the other board members that are in here had the opportunity to, to see what we started out with. We had made some changes um, by what comments we got back from the board members um, to what we're recommending now. Um, there was a few issues that we had in there that most board members were pushing back on, and so we made we made some changes and sent that to um, Bill. Um, so if anybody wants a copy of that. We can Is that okay if we distribute that to the ad hoc committee? Yeah, yeah. Any, okay. We can distribute that to any of them. All right. Thank you. Um, I think most of you have that stuff. <clears throat> I don't think we've, we've got uh, the energy left tonight to, to go into that. I think we probably need to schedule a meeting to hammer those out and to see which one of those uh, we want to take and which ones we can't live with or whatever. They did have some good ones. They, they did. And some good language changes that. It was good of them to take the time to meet with us in, uh, in the order. Right. right. Yeah, well, so thank them for that. that. Yeah. Appreciate that. Yeah, yeah there, there's some things that came to our attention that yeah. we needed to look at. So, uh, with that being said, should we schedule a meeting to do that? Let's do it maybe towards the end of the month. Sure. Um, we're going to need more time to do that, I think, not. We may have to meet earlier or something so we can get three or four hours in for apps. Do you think? Tuesday. What day is that? Tuesday. Tuesday, April 26th. At what time? Are you check? Chuck, you got your calendar or your. <laughs> get your calendars out here. <laughs> you can do what? I get off work at 2, so you're here by 2.30 that day. Bulk? Yeah. Oh, it's <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, I'm just, 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 I'm we're in about 26 to 4 o'clock, Marty. Oh, is that, is that the, okay. Is this room available in there? Um, actually, I don't know, and I probably should check that because that calendar is filling up pretty quick. Can you give me just one minute? Okay, sure. Don't want to schedule it in the We don't have a room in here. Good thought. <laughs> while, while we're doing that, we'll take some of the comments. Or, go ahead, Judy. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, there's an article in the Times about the Stiff District, and there was a hearing on March 1st in the street. Did anybody here go to that? No. Okay. The article in the, in the Times says that landowners within 750 feet of the boundary were notified. And I question whether any Livingston County people were notified of that hearing. So I think there's just, we don't know. it's like a, a vacuum of 
you know. So, and the purpose was to tell the public what the potential development would be. So that'd be a good thing for you to FOIA. I will FOIA that. Okay. And um, um, as far as, I had something else, but I don't know if I'm going to bring it up tonight. <laughs> so I'll let you go. That's a good time. Okay, here we go. Should we, you want to make that a motion? You want to make that a motion? <laughs> all right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 The 26 to 4 o'clock. Okay. Um, any other comments regarding wind energy? Short comments. <laughs> <laughs> I'd just like to thank each and every one of you that took the time to meet. Um, about the other changes that are going on in other ones pretty busy, so I appreciate y'all taking the time to be on that. Do you, I, I guess I never asked uh, Helen or Dean or anybody, do you pretty much represent the whole group of people? I mean, is that fair to say? I don't know. Not everybody I know. We, we, we didn't really consult with others, so There's I guess other people, group, but we don't have all and we keep them up to date. Okay, so we did talk with several of them about it. Right. right. I think it's fair to say that people are generally behind that. <clears throat> okay, I I think it's also I'm just gonna repeat this for the third or fourth time. Whenever we compromise, everybody should go home not too happy. Um, that's, that's just what happens. Everything that's in there probably isn't going to make it. Some of the stuff was good. You know, uh, nobody's, not everybody's going to, nobody's going to be happy. That's the way it should work when you compromise. And I think that a lot of this is a lot of compromise. Um, so, you know, don't plan on everything that was in green or red or whatever uh, showing up, but Certainly, we're going to take all of that into consideration. With that, I think we do have to um, put an end to taking more comments. I think we have to stop because otherwise, we're never going to get there. So, hear ye, hear ye. What shall it be? Uh, when's the board meeting? Is that the next? What, what date is it? May. 14th. 14th of April. Does that sound like a reasonable deadline for any written comments that we would take? Okay. Somebody was working on the proper wording for the referendum, and we kind of talked about that, but I don't think there's been any, any decision on... Not to my knowledge, but, um, how that wording looks. We, ha we actually haven't worked on it because we were waiting to see what happens with the Attorney General's opinion. We didn't want to spend time doing that. Uh, now. For that? Could that can I ask you, Bill, what your what your idea for a timeline is uh, as far as moving forward? I mean, I know we're still waiting on the Attorney General, but at some point... We're just going to have to say that we have to move forward without the Attorney General. Because I think that point is coming. I, but first off, no more comments. Okay. We have the meeting and try to hash all this stuff out and say, this is kind of what we're supporting right here. I know we've said this before. But we've got to yes. get to the point where this is it. We can't just say, uh-huh, we're going to think about that some more. So I don't know how we're going to do that, but we've got to do it. Why don't we make it to 26th in our... At that meeting for the oh, for for written more comments. Well, I thought that if we had them to look at okay. beforehand, that that would be. Uh, is that ample time to sure. for people to do that? Have Dean, no. Um, is this assuming that the referendum is going to be able to be allowed? Uh, if it doesn't happen, then what? Basically. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're going to go there, I guess, when we. When we get there. But I mean, would, would that open it up for more comments then? <laughs> yes, sir. We <laughs> have to. We have to. That's, 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 that's a, a plan that's a, a. That's a big ball game changer. It is. <laughs> it's a big ball game changer. Yeah. Go ahead. So the 14th, 
then I can get out word with the 14th and that's it. If you have anything else to come in, they need to get it to me or one of the one of the to get. Yeah, we can. We'll make it Friday the 15th. He just negotiated one more day. Your taxes and your comments. Written <laughs> 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 comments. Once again, the written comments, they're now, you know, if you put in there exactly what you think ought to be in the ordinance, and they may not make it in there, that's the way it's going to work. That's just the way it has to be. Judy. Since uh, the timeline is short, I'm I want to give you guys something to mull over. Um, it's an attorney general's opinion as to it, it talks about the statute and it brings the question: Do we have the statutory authority as a county to establish a setback beyond the property line? Beyond the property. This is the Attorney General's opinion where it says, yes, you can establish a setback at the property line. And it, it talks, the statute is mentioned in there. I didn't bring a copy of the statute. But, uh, Can you get an extra copy of that? I would want, I just want you to mull that over <laughs> because it could change, it could be a game changer. We still have stuff mm -hmm. for legal review, right? That we have, that we do for the 20th statute. Well, yeah. And even after the 26th, I mean, we're going to have to have so a leaving and continuing review. discussion about it. It's just that they didn't. Sorry, I don't want to be no, go ahead. my interpretation that you didn't want to, on the 26th, we come to an agreement on a bunch of stuff and then a bunch more comments are submitted on the 27th. That's what you're trying to avoid. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah but it won't mean the end of discussion. Yeah, then the process. process. Yeah. So I just it's don't, I question whether we have the statutory authority to establish a setback beyond the property where the building is being done. What do you mean, Judy? If you read that, <laughs> so, but the statute says uh, roadways, uh, uh, streams, bodies of water. The statute doesn't mention property lines. So this county had a question in 1996 for the Attorney General. May we establish setbacks to the property line? And he said, sure, we can. But you don't have to. Is that right? I think what she's saying is the question then is can you go inside the property line? Like can you go into the neighbor's right. property unless there's a stream or river in there? Okay, somebody's going to have to explain that to me. Well, well, I thought I the house well, we'll the we'll 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 the house we'll 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 Their attorney said you couldn't use that 152. That we have to go to the property line. That if we took that to court, we would lose it. But that, I mean, when we discuss it, it's the Class A, Class C property lines, and the right. C is the property. So we're, all, we're interchanging terms here, and we have to get all the terms straight exactly what that means. This is, yeah, I'm just talking about the set that. There's a marker there. There's markers. Okay. There's, there's, there's case law. There's my exception of case law. So I just don't think we have a Never ruled that it's not. I, I want you to cons consider it. Read, read it word for word. It's just not, you know, it tells, okay. it tells a little movie around there. All right, thank you. But, you know, one thing it does talk about, you can control the intensity of building. And I've thrown this out to a couple of individuals. What about an optimal ratio between residences and wind turbines? You know, as you can see, how many houses per turbine were there in Pleasant Ridge? A lot, a lot. More than More than Streeter Ridge, it was 150 turbines and 90 homes. So somewhere in there, I mean, I'm not saying those 90 homes weren't negatively impacted, but we don't really know. But the intensity might be 
a factor that you might want to consider. Okay, that's been discussed. We're gonna Just go ahead. Another question along those lines. This goes back to 2006. This was the first time I think that I heard this discussion. If we had no wind ordinance at all, then when these, when a company came in, if Invenergy came and wanted to do this, they'd actually have to get a zoning change. A, a zoning change. They'd have to get a change from ag to industrial, correct? Map change. A map amendment. A map amendment. Is that right? Um, that's not necessary. <laughs> that's, that's not necessary. If you don't have a special use, if you don't have any special use uh, permitting we, process for wind, wouldn't it be an industrial use? Not necessary. I mean, it's well, how, it how we would want to propose to change the ordinance or the map. I mean, is it a permitted use in agriculture absent the <coughs> special use? No. no. No, it's not permitted. So they wouldn't be able to build it on ag land without changing the zoning, right? It's so not, same it's, thing it's, it's not a permitted store. use anywhere. Right. So I mean, to, you have no, a change you know, General change, industrial, change difference. doesn't general industrial cover everything that's industrial? Mm -hmm. OK, we're going to move on. We're going on to the solid waste report here. Uh, Jack, I'll make this simple. It's in writing. You've seen it. It's in front of you. It's about the same as it could have been in the past. You have the amount of money came in, appreciate in the past. Any questions to ask me? Thank you. Okay, other issues to come before the committee. Uh, committee members, anything else you want to throw out there? You ready? Okay, public comment. We've already done it about a dozen times, but we'll do it once more. No comments. Going once, twice. That's it. All right. We have no bills to pay. Justin. Motion is done. Looking for a second on that one. You don't want to go on. Bill Peters in second. All those in favor.